welcome everybody so with this video I'm bringing you three things for race room first is an XML file which fixes dynamic effects like stationary friction and damping as well as fixes certain effects cutting out after returning from your garage or pause menu if nothing else I recommend you download and install this file second I have decided to share my personal profile which I've edited to produce in my opinion better force feedback from the game Various adjustments have been made to either enable certain effects like curb pull when using the in-game curb slider, or improve things like steering sensitivity and grip ratio. Uh, more details can be found in the instructions that I have included in the zip file. Finally, I'm going to run through the in-game force feedback settings and give you my recommended starting values as well as a brief description on what each setting does. If any of what I just mentioned sounds good to you, then keep watching and I'll meet you in the first section. We're going to start off by heading to the link down below in the description and downloading this FFB fix. You save it wherever you like. I'm going to save it to my desktop here. Once that's done, we can close this. Now we need to extract this. I use 7-zip, but you can use any software you like. That leaves us with an FFB fix folder, which if you open up, has instructions and a steering wheels.xml file, which we need to transfer over to the race room folder. Now the easiest way to get there is to open up your Steam client, right click on race room, hover over manage, and then click on browse local files. We can minimize Steam, bring this down here. We need to go into the game folder, game data and then general at the bottom you'll see the original file we need to copy over the file we just extracted replace the file when prompted to do so and then we can close these here and if this fix is all you came for then you're good to go but for the rest of you if you just plan on copying my settings to your current profile or the default SimMagic profile, then feel free to skip ahead to the Race Manager section. However, for those of you that are interested in trying my custom profile, continue watching and I'll meet you in the next section. This custom profile that I'm sharing with you guys has my settings and config edits applied, which can be seen on screen and in the included instructions. If this profile interests you, then we need to head to the download link I provided below and save this custom profile to our PC. I'm going to save it to my desktop here. Once that's done, we can close out of there and we need to extract that file. Now we need to navigate to our C drive, users, your username, OneDrive, Documents, My Games, Simbin, Race Room Racing Experience, User Data, and then Control Set. That's where you're going to drop in your new custom profile. You shouldn't get a prompt like that. Uh, I do because I already have it in here. And with that, you can close those out, and you can move on to Race Manager. Here in Race Manager, we're going to set the total force to your preferred strength. I suggest starting at 80 and see how that feels after adjusting your cars in-game. If it's too strong, lower this value. If it's too weak, increase this value. Wheel speed, we're going to set at 100 in order to retain maximum detail. Reducing this will add some weight to the wheel and can help with oscillations at high speed. However, the lower you reduce the setting, the more detail you're going to lose as you're restricting the wheel return speed and introducing a damping effect. Wheel damper, wheel spring, and wheel friction, we're going to leave at zero as these are constant forces and will hinder force feedback effects coming from the game. Filter frequency, I set mine to 85, which is 15% filter in Race Manager 4.1. This gives a good amount of detail and helps keep the wheels smooth. Where you set this is up to you. 
We're going to leave all the game effect and game force sliders at 100 so we don't restrict the force feedback signal coming from the game. Adjustments should always be made in game whenever possible. Steering angle and race manager should be matched to the car that we are driving in game as there's no soft lock available. You can view your car's steering rotation in the setup screen while on track. Suspension, I recommend setting this to normal, but you may prefer the hard setting instead as it gives the force feedback a sharper feel. I recommend trying both and deciding yourself. Response, we're going to keep on stable as it provides better detail and doesn't manipulate the game signal like Wild does. Now that race manager is set up, we can finally head in game. From the main menu here, we're going to click on Options at the top, Control Settings, then Controller Profiles. If you've downloaded and installed my custom profile, you should see it on the right here called SimMagic Teched Out. Simply click on it, then proceed to bind your gear by clicking on Edit Assignments. Now regardless of the profile that you decide to use, I recommend binding FFB Multiplier Plus and Minus to your wheel so you can make quick adjustments on track as well as FFB meter to a keyboard or wheel button so we can see if our cars are clipping. Next, I'll run through the force feedback settings and quickly explain what each one does so you can fine tune it to your preference. FFB intensity we leave at 100%. This adjusts the overall strength of the force feedback signal. We want to control the strength of our wheel in race manager so anything less than 100 would be a restriction. For example, setting this to 10 would leave you with an extremely weak wheel and a car that is still outputting a clipped signal. Smoothing, I set to 0%. This smooths out the force feedback signal to help with sharpness. Increase this if you find some force is too sharp. Decrease this if you find the force feedback effects are too washed out. Force feedback spring should be kept at 0 this effect is always forcing your wheel back to center, which hinders the self-steering forces coming from your car. FFB damper, I recommend starting at zero, as it isn't really required with the latest tire models and physics updates. However, if you do experience oscillations during straights, you can always bump this setting up. Steering force intensity, I set at 100%. This controls the total output of the steering forces below and should be kept at 100 for maximum dynamic range. FFB minimum force should be kept at 0. Anything more will cause a feedback loop while the wheel is centered, inducing oscillations. Understeer I have at 25%, which is subtle. This setting controls how light the wheel gets when understeering. Increase this if you have trouble feeling the loss of grip when entering a corner. Decrease the setting if you find yourself losing force too quickly when entering a corner. Now the next two settings go hand in hand with each other as they determine how much influence the vertical and lateral forces coming from the tires have on the force feedback. If you decide to increase the settings below, be prepared to decrease the steering force intensity in order to prevent clipping. Vertical load, I recommend starting at 45%. Increasing the setting will make the feeling of weight transfer, curbs and bumps more pronounced. Setting this too high will induce oscillations during straights and can make certain forces feel too sharp resulting in clipping. Lateral force, I recommend starting at 50%. This controls the basic self-aligning forces and cornering strength. Increasing this too much leads to a heavy wheel during cornering resulting in clipping and can make the self-aligning forces too strong, resulting in a snappy wheel. Setting this too high will also override micro details, resulting in a heavy and muted wheel. Steering rack, it's recommended to leave at 0%. Using this setting will lighten the wheel during cornering, and if set too high can give a floaty numb feeling. Leave this at 0 or close to 0 for a more direct feeling of the road. This setting also has negative effects with front wheel drive and all wheel drive cars and creates a notch in your wheel when passing center. Use this at your discretion. FFB effect settings, these are all canned effects that are personal preference. Slip effect, I recommend leaving at zero as it produces a constant vibration while driving. Where you set this is up to you, however, I don't recommend going above 3%. Engine vibrations. 
If using my custom profile, the slider is now active and has been modified. When set to a low level like 5 or 10%, it provides engine vibration while standing still. I've adjusted the curve so the engine vibrations diminish quickly once you press on the throttle. This should allow you to drive with no vibrations but have some extra effects while sitting in the pits. Do not set this too high if at all. Curb vibrations, I set this to 10% to enhance some of the older tracks as they lack detail and to add the curb pull effect I enabled in my custom profile. Reduce or increase the setting to your preference. Shift effect I put to 25%, I just like this effect. Gives the car a kick when shifting and livens things up a bit on track. Adjust this to your preference. Collision effect, I recommend leaving this at zero as we get enough collision effects already and increasing this can be hazardous to your health. Our last step is to pick a car we plan on adjusting and select a track with a lot of bumps like Nordschleife or Bathurst. Once on track, we're going to click on car setup and reset our car settings. It's recommended to do this anytime there's a game update or you change profiles. We're also going to take note of our car's steering rotation and match that number in Race Manager. Now we're going to head on track and bring up our FFB meter which we assigned to a keyboard button earlier. We're going to start driving paying attention to the graph for any clipping while cornering or suspension load up. Spikes from crashes, large impacts from curbs and going off road should be ignored. Using the FFB multiplier buttons we assigned earlier, adjust your car until you've maximized the signal with no clipping. Some cars can be increased, most have to be reduced. If you find you've reduced your car's multiplier as low as it allows and clipping still occurs during cornering, reduce the lateral force setting and retest. That takes us to the end of this video. Enjoy the fixes, go tweak those settings and let me know in the comments if you happen to use my custom profile. And with that, I will catch you all later. Peace.